Um, Jules says, can we talk about the stuff happening in the U.S.? I just came back from a trip with my partner in Europe and coming back to Roe versus Wade being revoked in shootings makes me so angry and sad at the U.S. Oh, yeah, we can talk about that if you want. I'm going to be real. I'm incredibly optimistic. Um, I, like I said, though, I've also been, like, in my own bubble, like, living my own life. So, um... It's so funny. As I was putting on my socks today, I thought to myself, America deserves school shootings. <laughs> but I didn't mean it literally. Like, kids don't deserve to be shot. But, like, if everyone's solutions are get rid of guns or never regulate guns, like, we're all contributing factors in the reason we have gun shootings. Like, until America really wants to pay attention to, like, introspection, philosophy, and mental health, like, what do you want? You know, why Why do we expect the world to be different than our ancestors had created it to be? Again, if this is the wild, wild west with iPhones, right? Then we're going to run into situations consistently with like shootings and mass suicide or issues with the medical field or we can't have faith in our politicians or whatever we're doing. It's just, it's interesting to me how people have, we are just so slow to learn, which is so fair. Like it's, I don't, again, I'm not upset that people are slow to learn, but I think that also is what makes it so easy to like touch grass and enjoy my life is like, even if you're in it, even if you're panicking over all of this, it doesn't help anything move forward. We're like the fact that Roe versus Wade is even a conversation though. I'm not completely opposed to the idea that it would be federally illegal. Like I'm not completely opposed to it, but I do think that it's anti-bodily autonomy, which is so important. Um, but I think like yeah, if weed's not going to be legal, why would we legalize killing our babies? Like, do you guys understand, like, the government hasn't even allowed us to grow or smoke a plant on a completely legal basis? The idea that they would, like, legally allow us to, like, terminate a life inside of us would be, do you, like, priorities. Like, maybe we should make drugs legal. Like, we can, do you know what I'm saying? Like, bodily autonomy is not the goal for America. Like, America cares about, like, I don't know, power and commerce. I don't even know what it cares about. But as a people, we really don't really value bodily agency, right? Like the leftists wanted to like force you to get vaccines and the Republicans want to force you to keep your babies and everyone wants to force you to dress a certain way and talk a certain way and look a certain way and believe a certain way. So again, it's so much easier for me to like touch grass and tell you all to fuck off and live in your miserable bubbles because I think we create our own bubbles. I believe I create my own life. If I chose not to touch grass the last three weeks and not invest myself into being with people I love and I just invested myself into fucking destiny drama, I would have lost an opportunity to like be with people I love and like have the best three weeks of my life. Literally. Literally the best three weeks of my life. Literally. Or I could have ignored that happiness and joy because oh abortion. Oh school shootings. They didn't happen to me, bitch. I'm not getting pregnant. So there is something to be said about the layers in which we exist within the bubbles. It's not about putting your head in the sand and ignoring what's happening. It's about seeing what's happening. Let's pretend we ignore it because we can't really, but let's pretend we're trying. Not really working, right? Naivety is bliss though. And then we come back, we examine, and we accept. I accept that this is the world. I don't like it. I would like it to change. I would like it to become more free. But freedom allows for chaos. You want everyone to have a gun? One of those people are going to shoot up a school. You want everyone to have access to abortion? Some of those people are going to use it like birth control. You want to believe all women who accuse anyone of rape? There's going to be false accusations. And there's going to be falsely imprisoned people. You want real freedom? Maybe somebody sells their organs for money. Maybe someone sells their body for money. Maybe somebody sells their kid for money. Freedom is not free of consequences, right? So yeah, we can talk about school shootings and Roe versus Wade if you want. But nowhere in the world is it perfect for everyone. Someone will always feel like a prisoner, even in the most wonderful utopia. When I was in high school, Brave New World was one of the top books we read. I become obsessed. I have like four copies of it in my closet all with different updates. Um, I love Brave New World. It's like one of the greatest stories of all time. And in Brave New World, um, there's that idea that like you're born and like created in like a lab. And, like a, and you know, and you're created with a personality and you're set and you're happy and you don't question things. And then there's of course the savage John. 
and then he comes in and he's like free but then he kills himself in the end because even in U- utopia where everyone's assigned and happy and everything's hedonistic and pleasurable there's no joy there for him you know what I mean but in school my teacher he was great um he asked us like how many of you want to be in this world where everything's done for you and you're like happy and you don't have to question and then how many of you want this world where it's like fuck no I'm gonna figure it out and about 50 50 if I'm being honest and I was on the side of like fuck the brave new world world I'll figure it out I like the chaos I'd rather be fucking in the wild wild west than ever in a perfect utopia where people get to decide what I do with my body for peace like I'd rather just be in chaos I like society I think society should be functionable like functioning or it should function but I don't particularly I don't think I trade it so far my life has not allowed I've not made the decisions to trade it yet um to the best of my memory I think that's accurate so Jewel says the U.S. Rover Roe my coworker almost had a four-year-old shot during the Highland Park shooting July 4th that's so sad. Like, don't get me wrong. When I'm, like, watching the news stories or I'm reading about the shootings, obviously, like, I'm super devastated. I'm, like, bawling and crying. None of this has anything to do with not investing in your feelings. None of this has nothing, like, anything to do with not processing. Process your feelings. Process the tragedies. Process your life. Process your skin color, your body type, your insecurities, whatever you have. But the world is a reflection of our participation in it period the end and most of us are participating in drama and chaos and we like it and I don't think you could convince me differently um based off of how everyone is reacting to everything that's been happening everyone's reactions are pretty on point for bubbles and it makes sense to me that people would want me to like talk about these things like Brittany cover this stuff it's happening Yeah, it's always been happening. It was happening when I was a kid. It's happening now. The same shit you're all dealing with now, I heard my whole life growing up. Nothing has changed. Everything has changed in terms of how we socialize. Everything. But nothing has changed. The polarization is the same. Drama is the same. It's all bullshit. Uh, Discord says, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? Um, You still feeling the shot? Um, No. I think I'm over it. Uh, It's a little sore, but not by much. And today I woke up not feeling uh, nauseous, which was good. Yesterday I still felt like shit. I felt hungover. Like I felt like I was on a boat. And I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I was not like, (laughs) I was not feeling it. That is for sure. Um, I was having a bad time of it, but it's okay. Oh, and that's another thing too. Like when I talk about how shitty my like vaccine uh experience was just now the last few days which makes sense like I have an autoimmune disorder whatever um I didn't get any backlash or anything but I just know there are people who think I'm complaining because I'm like secretly like anti-vax like there was like after the whole Mr. Girl thing there were people who are like I bet Brittany's anti-vax she hasn't gotten it yet you know lots of people have reasons for not getting a vax and yes I found a perfectly good reason to get one so I got it I'm going to fall some bitch let's go Will I get a vaccine to save the world? No. Will I get it for you? No. Will I get it for me? No. Will I get it to go to a BDSM event? Yes. <laughs> I just like, if I had gotten the vaccine and things had gone wrong and I didn't have a reason to get it, I would have been pissed at all of you and I would have fucking become a two and I would have yelled at the world. Um, <clears throat> but since I want to get it in order to do a thing I really want to do, I'll get it and I'll suffer the consequences. Even death. All for an event. Oh, 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 that's a great gift. That's a great gift of pushing that person into a pool. Um, so I think that's what is like so funny is like, how are you motivated? Why do you do things? Like I make money so I can prepare to be like the wife and breadwinner and like provider in my family, um, whether I'm a single mother or not, right? You guys know by 35, if I'm not married, like I want to adopt on my own. And I've been, or at least something, you know, whatever the state will allow me to do fuck the state I think I should I I need to go back my podcast is definitely going to cover it I need to go back to enjoying the levels more because like I do miss like level speak a little bit I've been sort of more focused on bubble speak um but I actually miss level speak so I think we're going to do that and we're finally going to cover the tv shows and animes I've been wanting to cover so I'm working on it I'm working on it life is drama that's why we like to watch it so much 
I suppose so. I don't know. My brother said to me the other day, he's like, you like the drama. And I was like, I like the drama? When I imagine people who like the drama, it's like, oh, just those people are like, oh, come here, I have to tell you something. Like, I, I worked with this woman who, like, every time I came into work, she was like, Brittany, 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 Brittany. And I just knew she had, like, some gossip or something. That's not my personality. But, but, I am, oh, my skirt goes sideways. I am a personality that likes to talk about how people interact. So on my Discord, like I do like talking about behavior and I'm like, oh, you see how you just did that thing? That's interesting, why did you do that? Was that a script? Was that your instinct? Was that your intuition? That's one of the things that I struggle with is that I just like observing people so much that it's hard. Also, did you guys see that there was just like a couple comments of criticism, I guess, on how we covered the Kalila bobby breakup? I guess some people were upset that I was more critical of Bobby, even though Kalila's the one who wanted to break up with him. But like, it's not, like the problem is, is like uh, what happens is like these women, these strong women of different variations of strong and weak women will cater to these men, will take care of them. These men will try to work on themselves but remain stagnant. Well, the woman seems to excel past hopefully some of her problems. And then they get to a point where the woman's like, okay, so are you like, are you going to like, am I going to stop being your mom or... And then they're like, nope, you're still going to be my mom. And so it's like, oh, like, I don't think your partner necessarily wants to be your mom, but I know there are times in your partner's life in which they're going to need you to be their parent. And I think that's fine. I think moments and times in the relationships where things go not great, yes, you want a supportive, wonderful partner who will take care of you. Every day, though, do you want your male or female partner, or just like your partner, regardless of gender, to constantly trauma dump on you? Or do you want a relationship where you guys get to wake up and actually chill with your life? So like I will always have borderline most likely, but though it does fade over time, I'll probably always have issues with my mental health, but I really don't want my mental health to be the center of my life. So I'm pushing myself so hard guys, the last three weeks to like fully prepare for the idea of like, not only cohabitation, but like being a mother, like especially being a mother, like I really wanna be better. Ooh, Tim Dillon. Brazen says, Tim Dillon says it perfectly. America is like bipolar, schizophrenic patient, just spiraling into more doom and gloom. Yeah, we're, we're, it's weird though, because like, I really like America. And I also live in a really cool town. So like, I'm chilling, but I really like America. I feel safe here. I operate here. I know how to make money here. I know how to speak here. I know how to, I just know how to move here. Like this chaos, I understand. I didn't always understand it. And I definitely felt like I was spiraling in my 20s. God, I felt like I was... I was, no, I didn't feel like I was spiraling. I was spiraling, period, period. I was spiraling, just wanting to die every day, everything. God, it was such a mess. And all of it, the politics, the news, it was like somebody was just banging on my head and being like, the world's ending, the world's ending, the world's ending, the world's ending, but it doesn't end. No, you know how I know it doesn't end? Because your bitch still has to have good credit. I still have to watch what I say on the internet and I still have to buy a house. So the world's not ending. If the world was ending, all of you bitches would probably be more at peace. Because if the world is ending, no one would care. And then we could actually go fucking like have orgies and do drugs and relax. But no, the world isn't ending. We still have to exist. Even if there's a civil war, like some of us are probably going to live. Ugh. And then we're going to have to exist and go to work all the same and do our taxes all the same. That's what I'm saying. Do you guys really want to get into a civil war with each other where we're just going to have to be in a world where we still have to pay taxes? Like, if we're all going to kill each other over a civil war, can the end result be whoever wins actually makes it so no one has to work and we can all just fuck all day? Because that'd be great. Or no. Are we going to have a civil war so we can just, like, once again, go back to working our asses off and paying taxes? Fuck you. I can't believe you guys. The promise the world is giving us is, hey, if you vote for us, we're going to regulate your bodies. Every side is promising that. Fuck all of you. Hey, if we win the war, um, we get to discriminate and bully these people. <gasps> and it's like, oh, what side of the what side of the bubble do I want to be on? Who do I want to bully is really the answer. If you want to bully JK Rowling, you join the left. If you want to bully trans people, you join the right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The question you should ask yourself is who do you want to bully? That way you can make a decision about what side to be on. Because it's really what we all end up doing, right? Um, it 
Discord says, uh, just get a Shiwi. Is that the blue thing with the funnel? Because I have one of those. I just, I got one after I made a mess trying to pee the first time. I got one and it's such a game changer for camping. Just don't be on drugs when you use it or you might pee on yourself. <laughs> not speaking from experience or anything. Of course you're not. Of course you're not. I really believe you. That's so funny. Stop. Um... It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Da 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 da. Da da da. Who you are. Kareem says, actually, you mean fetus, madam? Fetus, fetus just means baby. Like, it's all a baby at this end of the day. It doesn't matter. Call it what you want to call it. It's ending a human life in progress. I don't. I think the semantics just make us feel better. They, it can matter. Like, it does matter when, on the micro. But ultimately, if you just, like, move the conversation to are we ending a life in progress, that's really the conversation we should be having. And the reality is that we should say, yes, we all agree we should be killing people. We agree we should kill people who are in prison. We want to kill people in foreign countries. We want to kill people who rape people. We want to kill kill baby rapists. We want to kill we want to kill everybody. People wish Trump would die every day during the 2016 era. Everyone wants everyone to die. Everyone doesn't do it for the most part, which is why we have a society. But everybody has the thought of, I wish so and so would die. I see your tweets. I know you having these thoughts. You know what I mean? So like we can pretend all we want that we don't think that way, but people be thinking that way. So you know what I mean? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Be mess. Let's all be so like sociopathic murderers. Let's go. Ooh, I just got back from Tennessee. I hear Tennessee is beautiful with its rolling hills. Like I've only driven through Tennessee, but. Farm brother almost tried to move me out to Tennessee, but I was like, nowhere past Texas. Texas or West, people, focus. <sighs> it's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are. Um, Ta-da! Says the point of Roe versus Wade passing was so the legal system is consistent. It doesn't contradict itself. It's done rigorous, rigorously, so hopefully nothing bad ever gets passed. Mm. Fingers crossed. I think my, Jewel says, yeah, I think my core pain in the U.S., uh, at the U.S. is disappointment. Like, we should be better, but how people are fucked up and in pain, especially after two years of COVID, war, inflation, job instability. Yeah, it's like, look, if we're going to be compassionate towards people and suffering, then we have to be patient with humanity as a whole. Right? Like, if we want to be really five about this, there's something to be said about, I think, being patient with humanity and ourselves through the, like, growing process. It's um, it's that contradictory thought. Um, I just had this conversation with someone where, like, there's a contradictory thought you always want to have in your mind, which is take your time, but do it right now. Take your time. Take your time. Life is hard. I know. I know. I hope you be take your time. But do it the fuck now. Do it the fuck now. Right now. Do it the fuck now. Don't waste time. But take your time. No problem. We all have mental health problems. Take a deep breath. Borderline isn't easy. PTSD isn't easy. Taxes aren't easy. And But do it right now. Do it the fuck now. Don't waste any time. Life is very short. You're going to die tomorrow. Do it right now. Those two thoughts have to work in conjunction for world, the world to work. But what happens is we usually choose one or the other. Hustle, 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 burnout. Uh, live my life, live my life. We're, like Only live my life. Not pay attention to my job. Poor. Jobless. Homeless. It's not going to work right? The hustlers might have a job and a mansion, but no love life. You might have a love life, but no fucking mansion, no house, no stability, no ability to have kids in a healthy way. You have to choose both those things. I use the example of having a passport. Like you don't need a passport. Take your time, but like get it done right now in case tomorrow you need a passport. Again, probably not going to travel. Don't worry about a passport, but like get it done because tomorrow you could literally need a passport, right? It's like you don't have to get anything done. You don't have to get into shape. You don't have to get a job. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to do shit. But you probably want to get it done so your future self can util like, utilize the tools you've created for her or them or him before you even knew you needed it. 
So again, you don't have to do anything. Life is meaningless. We're floating like planets in space. We're doing this thing. It doesn't matter. Literally doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. But get it done. Seriously, get it done because you have to exist in your life every day. Get it done. Get it done right now. Right now. Get it done. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Alice says, I was trying to explain this to a friend the other day who's super stressed about all the world stuff. It was hard. I'm not sure she fully heard me because she's so bogged down by it. That's the thing about being like really in a bubble and not ready to hear something. And I fall into this too. I think we all do for a multitude of reasons. <clears throat> but um, it is hard. You can see it in people's eyes. You can see when they don't hear you. I can see it when people ask me like, hey, have you been vaxxed? I can see their whole world is dependent on me answering this correctly. And if I, like, Mike, I have not, the internet, do not tell my mom I got vaxxed. She does not know yet. She is going to be mad. Because <laughs> she, like, if I have any problems having kids in the future, she's going to blame it on the vaccine. But if I didn't get the vaccine and then I had problems getting pregnant, she would say, well, this is because you took birth control, birth control in your 20s. If I hadn't had birth control... And I still had trouble getting pregnant in my 30s. My mom would say, maybe she would say, oh, it's probably from the marijuana, Betsy. Do you get what I'm saying? Any person in a bubble is more able, in a weird way, to create, not even to get bogged down by the bubble. Funny enough, because they're in a bubble, they're more likely to logic their way into solidifying their answer and doubling down because the bubble has given them the reassurance that, yep, Every reason why Brittany isn't pregnant in her 30s is going to be because of all the things you think are bad and never for any other reason but that. And it's going to make sense because for every story, for every for every assumption about me, like Brittany can't get pregnant because she was on birth control, there's a story out there about a woman who couldn't get pregnant because of her birth control. And that story alone is going to be the reason why everything, you know what I'm saying? So even with abortion, like being used as birth control, that's always something some conservatives say, like women are going to use it like birth control. And then the left or the liberals go, women don't use abortion for birth control. Women value like the sanctity of life. They just have to make hard decisions sometimes. And then conservatives will say, well, why is it a hard decision if it's not a baby? And then liberals will be like, well, it's a hard decision because it's going to be a baby. And I'm like, I fucking hate you both. It's a hard decision because terminating a life is difficult. That's what it is. It's not that fucking hard. We are biological creatures. We desire and ever evolutionary, evolutionarily created to like have babies and procreate. Going against our very nature is going to hurt us. It's not that deep. And because it's not that deep, because the answer is simple, you can choose a simple solution. Live with the shame or guilt or feeling you have over doing something that's anti your biology. Or also move towards something that's a part of your intellect, your consciousness, which is like a relationship with your body and like your future. You can justify it any other way. Like you can justify it any way you want. But it, it like what you're doing is what you're doing. Right? I don't need that anymore. I don't need to justify it. I just need to say, yeah, I'm going to do that thing. I know it's kind of crazy, but I'm going to do it. Because I want to. It's who you are. It's like that woman. Do you remember that woman who went on tour with her like kind of fuck buddy ex-boyfriend who raped her? And then they talked about it and they went on tour to talk about how he raped her. And I was just like, how rapey could he have been if you could sit next to him? And then a part of me is like, I guess he could have raped you like a pushy rape. But then I don't know if I wanted to friend rape that way anymore. Like if I was, <clears throat> let me, uh, let me say this this way. I don't know. I talked to my homies about this. Like, oh, my rape homies. We have a lot of rape. A lot of women in my life have been raped. So I talked to them about it. And we all felt like we couldn't sit next to our rapists and have like a reasonable conversation. I could sit next to somebody else's rapist and have a conversation with them. I couldn't sit next to my own rapist and have a conversation with them. Right? So the fact that this woman could go on tour with this man made us all go... Is he your rapist or is this a story you're telling for views? Because I could sit next to, again, someone else's rapist. Because then that's just a person I'm observing. But if it was mine, I would, I, I think I would, in my head, I think I would see red and want to kill them. 
but I'm not actually sure. So here once again are the murder thoughts. I think I maybe would want to. Or I would cry and turn into the fetal position and literally become a useless pe- like piece of shit. But I don't have a lot of compassion or patience for the people who have raped me. But I could have the patience and compassion for somebody who raped someone else. So, hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, Discord is saying they have different relationships with their rapists, so they think they could talk to them. I think that's very reasonable. I think a lot of people could probably talk to their rapists. Um, My bubble is not that way. My bubble is very, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> quote discord discord's quoting my murder thoughts quotes that's pretty funny who you are who you are um b west says at the end of the day we only have so many fucks to give give them wisely amen um jr says that's how i feel coming from the uk i think it's great but people who have lived here their whole life complain about it it's all perception Alex says there's no growth in utopia. I think there's something to that. That's probably why I don't like utopia. But also just goes against our desire as humans. So in a utopia where you're like biologically engineered to be content, I'm not sure that it would matter. But since I'm biologically wired to actually not be content, I am driven by such a deep part of me to always be better and to change and to suffer and to sacrifice. Um, I obviously would probably feel different if I was like genetically engineered to be different. But even in a world where I didn't have to work or anything like that, I need to, I need to work. I need to, I need to do job. I need to do, do something. I need to work. I need to do something. So, uh, not just raising, cause like, I, I'm going to mean, I mean this in the nicest way. Raising kids is really hard. It is. I'm, and I'm going to be so tired doing it for sure. Um, but I also know that I am, I don't know. Every baby I've ever nannied, even the ones who had a hard time sleeping, like, I eventually got every baby to do what I wanted it to do. So I kind of have this arrogance that my baby's going to do what I need it to do and it's going to sleep. But not all babies sleep. Some babies stay up. Some babies like have those personalities. But I'm going to make my life work for me. You know how it goes, girls. You got to make life work for you. And I don't think I could do that. I I think if I kept being burdened by the weight of the world, I wouldn't be able to make life work for me. So maybe that's the lesson that I actually learned in my 20s was that when you make the world try to work for you, it won't happen because it will never work that way. It doesn't work for anyone. Like it does work for some people better than others. But it doesn't ever truly work for people the way they exactly want it to. Because no matter who you are, like name the person you're like, the world works for them. Does it? Or are they also still striving for something they can't attain? Like that's the irony. Even the people who the world works for on like our level, whatever that means, it doesn't really work for them on theirs. <clears throat> like I don't know but for me I think the world doesn't work for me but I work for me and I can work around the world did I hear about the Biden iCloud link leak no I have no idea what that's about I have no idea Jewel says well this conversation is also very individualistic I feel for the others because I see my job as an alive human including caring about my community detaching is healthy mentally but but so individualistic Well, I mean, but even as a community, like, it doesn't work if you don't think individualistically. You have to be a good individual to be a good community member. You just can't be a good community member without being a good individual. So a good community only exists because of good individuals. Even family units only work, like, family units work because everyone puts in the effort. And the ones who don't, they're the ones we all have to worry about. Think about having, like, a one in your life. Like if everyone is participating in the house, everyone does chores except for one person, you're like, bro, would you fucking help please? And they're like, nah, I don't want to. Not because they can't. They just don't want to. They're literally the reason now that the community is going to suffer, right? But then we have to decide on what that means to be a good community member. 
What if a good community member is somebody who always dresses modestly? Like, what are you willing to sacrifice to be a good community member? What if they did a study that said perfect communities don't have tattoos, gay people, or drugs? Would you be willing to get rid of your tattoos, never do drugs, and never eat pussy again? Or depending on your gender, whatever that means. You know what I mean? I think that's the question you have to ask yourself. And the answer for me is no. Fuck you. Fuck the world. I'm going to eat pussy for the rest of my life, bitch. Okay? You know what I mean? Like, no. It's not. Because I 100% don't believe in anything we've... Like, I don't believe in these constructs or anything that we've created. I think it's all bullshit. So, no, I'm not. For bullshit, I'm absolutely not going to give up the things that make me happy. Which is why I'm an individualistic person. But I do want to be a good community member. I'm never going to murder you and I'm never going to rape you and I'm never going to steal from you. And I'm never, that, those are my promises. <coughs> <coughs> and don't put me back into a position where I'm survival Brittany because I will do that shit as survival Brittany. <coughs> but I won't do that shit as um, living Brittany. So, you know, don't make it me versus you because I'll win every time. Um, nothing specific for dinner. Probably will eat something small, whatever you're making, low calorie preferred, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> I want, my sister wants to know, I want to know what she wants for dinner. I want to order groceries, groceries. Do you want anything? It's who you are. Who you are. It's who you Um, okay. JR says, I personally don't like how the U.S. is set up and I don't feel, I don't feel safe. That's why I left. Yeah, I can see that. Some people have like, I think I was, <clears throat> I was made for like rough living and I was made for chaos. But I also think the U.S., I don't know, man. I really fucking love it here. It's expensive as shit though. Fuck. I could buy so many cool places around the world with my money. Here I'd be lucky to get, like, I'm trying so hard to get a house here with the money I make. And I'm like, I should be able to afford, like, more than enough. Ugh. What are you going to do? <clears throat> Raiders Cat, how are you? Hello, I see you. <laughs> do you want cheap gas or not? Yes. Then I'm sorry, Ahmed. You gotta bomb some children. Stop. That's so funny. It's true. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone complains about, like, the modern world. The modern world was built off the backs of slaves. And, like, child labor, you're welcome. Like, you can keep saying you don't want the world that's been created for you, but you sure as fuck are taking advantage of it, and you sure as fuck are utilizing it. I'm a YouTuber. You can bet as shit I'm utilizing all the fucking slave labor that's been in existence and happening around the world. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm just, I think I'm more about radically accepting that we participate in it and while examining that if we were faced with it, like head to head, hopefully we've made, we'd make a better decision, but I'm not sure. Look, I hate injustice as much as the next hoe, but I'm not in a position to stop injustice around the world. I'm only in a position to help the people in my bubbles, so I will do that. Like, if you owned up, if I think if the world owned up to that reality, the world would be better and it would be more individualistic. But what it would really be is smaller scale problems. We need smaller scale problems so we can create smaller scale solutions. I don't understand these overarching like large solutions for things, right? Uh, oh, birth control. Birth control is a great example. Okay, so let's say um, you, you go to somebody like your family member and they're like conservative so they're anti-birth control. And you go to them and you say, hey, um, I really need to do this thing. Uh, it looks like I'll have to get on birth control. Let's say the birth control is uh, to prevent pregnancy, not for acne or health. And they go, um, someone goes, oh, but don't use birth control. You would have to say to them, well, okay, I'm a secularist, let's say. I can use birth control, right? You can't give me advice. Um, let's say they're Catholic because I think Protestants use birth control. So specifically they're Catholic. Let's say they're my family. And I go to farm brother and I say, farm brother, I want to use, I, I want to, you know, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to use birth control. He goes, don't use birth control right um birth control kills babies it's like 
Okay, but that's like your bubble. And that's what you think. Can you give me advice on what I think? So then maybe he'd say, well, even though I'm a Catholic and I don't use birth control, Brittany's not Catholic. So I'm going to encourage her to not use birth control, maybe natural family planning, but I'm going to try to give her advice that best suits her life so she can make the best decision regardless of her not being Catholic. Sometimes people can do this, but most of the time they look to the bubble to inform them of how to think so they don't have to really create the answer. A four is obligated by nature to find the answer outside the bubbles, which is difficult. It is incredibly difficult, much like in the two bubbles when an atheist leaves the church, like becomes an atheist and leaves the church. They often are lost. And I relied heavily on like Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens to get me through that process in my life. Christopher Hitchens in particular was my favorite. Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris were like the leftovers. But for me, like if Christopher Hitchens didn't exist when I was leaving, I wouldn't have had a guide. I still needed a bubble guide. When I left the bubbles and I was a four, I still needed a five guide. I just need guides. That's just who I am. But I need to pick the right guides to give me the right advice. If you're just looking at guides who live in bubbles, the answers come from bubbles. So when you look at me and you say, how do I fix the world? Well, what bubble are you in? If you're in the leftist bubble, you save people from school shootings by banning guns. If you're in a conservative bubble, you save people from gun shootings by giving people guns. And then if you're in the mental health sphere, you could say, you know, maybe it's just like mental health, guys. The problem is, is that if the answer changes based off the bubble you're in, is truth itself subjective or is the way that we process truth the subjectivity? And the answer is yes to all of it. Yeah. Maybe. Probably. Contextually. And I think that's what's so difficult about life is that if you make a rule, let's say we make a society. Fuck. Let's say we make up a rule where we say we live in a society where no rape occurs, period, at the end. And any rapist is killed on the spot. Okay. What if the rule is rape is by definition uh, groping someone in a grocery store? Would we still be in favor of the idea of rapists being killed? Or do we only like the idea of rapists being killed when we imagine a brutal rape of a child? Just to make it pretty sure we'd all kill a child rapist, right? Maybe, maybe. So I want you to think about that because that's how I think about life, but also like that's how I think you should consider life when thinking about these things. Like you should consider, do we really want the rule or do we actually just want the lack of rape? Do we want the rule, the law, no rapist allowed? Or do we actually want less rape? Because making a rule that no rapists are allowed doesn't actually give us no rape. Rape is illegal. We still get raped. So it's not really the law we need. It's not the rule we need. We are not, we are just giving band-aids to, like, we're doing band-aid solutions. We're like, yeah, there's a big conversation to be had there that I think helps me process it better. But I also think it's rational to want to kill a rapist. I think it's really rational to want to feel or see red when the people in your life are hurt. I think it makes sense to be angry when unju- when injustice has occurred. I'm like a very possessive and like, per- like, do you not see it on my face? Like when the, I, I mm. Ooh, Discord just said it. Rationality isn't morality. If you want to, if you, okay, hold on, sorry. If you want to, you can say, I want sex. I am stronger than this person. I will get sex from them. Exactly. Yeah, rationale. Yes, exactly. Rash, yes. So being rational, but the thing is, in America, we do this thing. I just talked to someone about this. You all know when we go through your, like, I'm a sociopath stage. Like, <laughs> I'm such a sociopath. Like, I'm so reasonable. I'm so logical. I don't even feel feelings. Everything I do is rational. Yeah, you can rationalize anything, bitch, you dumb bitch. But not wanting to be in your feelings is a feelings reaction. I just want to, I saw the Stoics word and I just want to say like, Stoicism to me has nothing to do with being devoid of your emotions. It has to do with living through them. You don't become a Stoic by like, emotions are useless and nothing matters. Like read a fucking book. It's about moving through and exploring all of your emotions and making peace with them. You don't meditate on your mother's funeral as a Stoic in hopes to deny yourself feelings about your mother's death. You do it to survive and comprehend the compassion that exists within your mother's death. The humility that can exist throughout a death. 
not to deny yourself a relationship with your feelings, but to have a better relationship with your feelings. Stoicism to me is a better relationship with your feelings, not a less, not less of one. I think people who are intellectually lazy read Stoicism as having a lack of relationship with your feelings, personally.